Mary J. Blige's songs are known for being a raw reflection of her life experiences. Whether it was a tough childhood, substance abuse issues, or difficult romances, she managed to pull herself out of those dark times. Here's what the nine-time Grammy Award-winning artist went through while staking her claim as the queen of hip-hop soul. Mary J. Blige was born in the Bronx, New York on January 11, 1971 to Cora and Thomas Blige. According to The Guardian, her mom struggled with alcoholism, and her dad was a jazz musician and Vietnam vet who suffered from PTSD. Biography.com reports her dad left when Mary was just four. However, he would return from time to time and would get physical with her mom. Instability was the norm during the early years of her life. According to People magazine, they lived off her mom's low salary as a nurse and bounced around from place to place. Her family, along with her five cousins and two aunts, eventually settled down in a gritty public housing project in Yonkers. With her mom busy working, Mary said she was sometimes left with people her mom thought she could trust. It was around this time that a young Mary was taken advantage of by a family friend. She kept the secret to herself for years. Music was Mary's savior. Rolling Stone revealed she would go to the pier with her friends and sing as loud as she could over the Hudson River, just so she could hear what the music sounded like over the water. Mary told People magazine, I'd wake up in the morning singing and go to bed singing, and it just made me feel great. Things weren't going great at school, though. She told the Washington Post she didn't care about education, so she dropped out. That's when she turned to the streets and meaningless relationships. In an interview with The Guardian, Mary said, My mother raised me with a lot of respect, but the street raised me with disrespect. Her relationship with her family, who she described as angry, hateful, jealous, ignorant, prideful people, deteriorated as well. At the age of 17, she visited a local mall and recorded a version of Anita Baker's song entitled Caught Up in the Rapture. A friend gave the tape to Andre Harrell at Uptown Records. He was so blown away, he visited Mary and her family at their tiny Yonkers apartment. Mary sang for him, and he signed her to a record deal on the spot. To kickstart her career, she linked up with Sean Puff Daddy Combs. He became the executive producer of her debut album, What's the 411? After its 1992 release, it went on to become a multi-platinum hit. While working on the album, Mary met R&B singer Casey Haley of Jodeci. The two were crazy about each other, which was evident in their duet, I Don't Want to Do Anything. They began dating and their relationship was full of ups and downs. There were even rumors that Casey put his hands on Mary and cheated on her throughout their romance. Mary's depression and pain were on full display with her 1994 album, My Life. In an interview with Makers, she called the album a cry for help. She added, I took all this depression and oppression I was dealing with and just put it in my music. Her career took a nosedive as she hired and fired managers and went from smoking substances to sniffing them. She told The Guardian she not only paid for her own habit, but she footed the bill for everyone who was around her. The world got a first-hand look at her dysfunctional relationship in 1995. Jodeci and Mary sat down for separate interviews with the United Kingdom talk show entitled The Word. Jodeci taped their interview a few weeks prior to Mary's appearance. While live on the set, the talk show showed Mary a clip of KC enthusiastically denying their relationship and shouting, KC is not getting married. <laughs> As the camera turned back to a visibly upset Mary, she replied, Was he being super cool or what? Are you getting married? No, we're not getting married. I was just going to say, I'm very glad no, to hear that, No, we're not getting married. We're not getting married now. No, married now. No. They didn't break up at that point, and with a relationship fueled by heavy drinking and taking substances, things continued to go downhill in her professional and personal life. When Mary and Method Man took home a Grammy in 1996 for their song, I'll Be There For You, she admitted to Los Angeles Confidential Magazine she sniffed substances on her way inside the event and was, quote, drinking like a crazy person. Her career was on fire, but Mary's antics were out of control. According to The Guardian, she earned a reputation for constantly showing up late to interviews. She would pop off at female fans who got too close to Casey and was accused of being hostile to reporters. 
TV host and model Veronica Webb was one of the unlucky few who felt Mary's wrath. As their interview went all the way left, Mary asked her to step outside to fight. After that incident, the singer's record label forced her to take etiquette lessons, but Mary only lasted two days. What people didn't realize was Mary's outbursts were covering up the pain she was dealing with. She told The Guardian, when you hate yourself, you draw people to you who hate you too. And although she didn't name Casey, she told the story of a boyfriend who tried to take her life. She said she received a message from God who said, love yourself and put yourself first. But before that could happen, she and her then boyfriend got into an altercation. She said, I screamed with all the breath I had left as my boyfriend physically tried to take me out of this world. Casey gave his version of their relationship years later and said they were young and just having fun. He told The Breakfast Club, it just exploded. I did some things. She couldn't take that heat. During an interview with Vibe magazine, Casey said despite Mary's belief that they would become husband and wife, he never intended on marrying her. He admitted he gave her a ring, but only because she kept hinting at it and he wanted to get her off his back. He said, we never talked about starting a family or anything like that. We were not as serious as people thought. He admitted he loved her, but he couldn't take it anymore. After 12 years, their toxic romance came to an end. Speaking to The Telegraph, Mary said she continued drinking heavily and her substance issue caused her to stay up for three days at a time. She needed to make a change, but she didn't know how. One afternoon while in a hotel room in Florida, Mary was spiraling to her lowest point. She said, people I thought were friends were just dispersing. I could feel myself slipping away too. Meanwhile, manager and producer Kendu Isaacs was working on a Queen Latifah track when he thought to himself, we should put Mary on this song. The year was 2000 and Queen Latifah's people reached out to Mary's people, but Mary was on tour. Therefore, they decided to meet up when Mary's tour stopped in Detroit. Mary met them at the studio and told Essence she thought Kendu was cute, but she left him alone because she thought he and Queen Latifah were a couple. They all hung out later that night, and Mary and Kendu got an opportunity to get to know each other. He told Essence he was open to getting intimate with her, but it never happened. He said, when we got in close proximity to each other, it felt weird. It felt like a brother-sister relationship. They went their separate ways, but Kendu was eager to see her again. With some help from Queen Latifah, they received each other's contact information. While Mary was contemplating her life during that dark afternoon in Florida, Kendu called her. She told Essence Magazine, it was the first conversation I had with a guy that let me know somebody cared about me, other than wanting to just, you know, sleep with me. Kendu told her he had the right medicine to heal her, and he offered his full support. Instead of going to rehab, she and Kendu turned to a higher power. He continued to be there for her, and she eventually let her guard down, but it wasn't easy. She admitted she treated him badly for a while. She told Parade Magazine, I was suspicious, it seemed too good to be true. She stopped drinking and forgave all the people who hurt her in the past. She also opened herself up to receiving true love. They moved in together and they told Essence that after studying the Bible, they decided to practice abstinence. Eventually, Mary told Kendu, you will have to show me that you really love me that much and move out. So Kendu packed up his things and left. They continued dating and got married at her New Jersey home in December 2003. An instant family was formed as Mary became a stepmom to Kendu's three kids from his previous marriage. The family settled down in a $12 million mansion in New Jersey. Things were working out for them, but it wouldn't last. In 2016, Mary filed for divorce after 12 years of marriage. She told Angie Martinez she faced, quote, overwhelming disrespect from Kendu during their marriage. She could sense things were falling apart when he began questioning her about her cooking and her hairstyles. In an interview with Variety, Mary dragged Kendu even further by saying she thought he loved her, but he turned out to be a con artist who was after her money. She added, there was someone else that was his queen. I got played. I got suckered. Rumors emerged that Mary's protege, a singer named Starshell, was Kendu's mistress. Mary spoke of the pain and hurt caused by them in her VH1 documentary entitled Strength of a Woman and called Starshell Becky with the good hair. 
If that wasn't messy enough, in her 2017 divorce docs obtained by TMZ, Mary said Kendu used about $420,000 of her money and spent it on his new girlfriend. Starshell denied all the allegations and announced her engagement to investment coach Rashawn Williams in January 2020. Mary fired Kendu as her manager, and he demanded close to $130,000 per month in spousal support. He claimed to have grown accustomed to a lavish lifestyle, and after getting fired, he had no income to support himself. People Magazine reported Mary was ordered to pay him temporary spousal support in the amount of $30,000 per month. Eventually, their divorce was finalized in 2018, but the terms were kept confidential. Looking back, Mary now realizes Kendu wasn't the right man for her. She told BBC Radio, in the future she'll only accept a partner who has more money than her because she refuses to take care of another man. She's now at peace and even made amends with her ex-boyfriend Casey during VH1's 2017 Dear Mama Mother's Day special. It's true that time heals all wounds. Mary has gone on to earn her GED and is focused on uplifting other women through her charity, the Foundation for the Advancement of Women Now. She continues to make music and is taking the acting world by storm by receiving two Oscar nominations in 2018 for her role in the film Mudbound. Mary's strength echoes throughout her relatable lyrics, and despite all that she's been through, she'll forever reign supreme as the queen of hip-hop soul. Let us know your thoughts on Mary J. Blige's life story. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.